Welcome to the Bothell City Council regular meeting of April 3rd, 2018. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. All council members are here. Uh, next is the meeting agenda approval. Is there any changes to tonight's meeting agenda? Nope, nope. seeing none. Uh, review of the projected agenda. Is there any changes to the pro projected agenda? Seeing none. Uh, review of public engagement opportunities. So we have the Capital Facilities Plan Open House and Ice Cream Social Thursday, April 5th from 5.30 to 7 at the Bothell Operations Center just behind Red Robin up in uh, Thrasher's Corner. Uh, free Green Cleaning Workshop Friday, April 6th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Recology Store on uh, Bothell Road Highway. Artist Reception Meet Dennis uh, Wunsch uh, Tuesday, April 10th from 4.30 to 6 p.m. City Hall. Um, Oh, we're at City Hall. Okay, and next was the uh, staff briefings to the solid waste hauler update. And we have Sabrina to kick it off. One moment. Sorry, I got a little technical difficulties here. Okay. All right, so good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Sabrina Combs. I am the Sustainability and Projects Coordinator in Public Works. And this evening, I am going to have Waste Management and then Recology Cleanscapes present an update on our solid waste programs. As you know, in the city of Bothell, we have two haulers. We have Recology Cleanscapes doing a majority of the collection services. And then we have waste management covering our annexation area. So I'm going to start with waste management and then we're going to move into Recology Cleanscapes. So I have Emily Newcomer coming up for waste management. Thank you, Sabrina, Mayor, City Council, City Staff. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to um, just provide a brief overview of um, the 2017 solid waste updates for the annexation area within the city of Bothell that waste management is fortunate enough to uh, provide service for. Um, so as Sabrina mentioned, um, we service an annexation area of Bothell. It includes, uh, consists of uh, 1,678 residential customers, seven multifamily customers, and 15 commercial customers. And the services we provide um, are similar in alignment with the, uh, the rest of the city, the weekly garbage recycling and compost collection, um, curbside collection of, of bulky waste and, and motor oil, um, discount for seniors, and then we also do have a, an award-winning public education and outreach staff to support with multifamily, commercial, even single family um, outreach. So how did uh, this uh, area of Bothell um, stack up this year in terms of overall waste diversion? Um, fairly, really well. Um, the single family, the residential sector, if you will, um, diverted um, nearly 57% of its waste from the landfill towards recycling and compost. Uh, the multifamily commercial, I mean, admittedly, it's a much smaller segment of, of that part of the city, but uh, nearly 23% as well as for the commercial, 12.5%. Uh, and, and so the, the graph on the bottom just breaks it down by overall tonnage generated by um, the various uh, sectors. And so some 2017 public education highlights. Uh, we This year we worked um, closely with Sabrina and city staff to create a more streamlined, updated uh, 
single family mailer that would be more closely in line with uh, sort of the information that Recology puts, uh, share, shares with uh, the residents and, and customers they service. Um, we participated in the city's 2017 uh, Ecotober event, which was the first time we'd participated. Um, and, you know, we um, are, receive requests all the time from preschools or other organizations to provide recycling presentations or on-site assistance. Um, Crystal Springs Preschool, sort of an annual event providing recycling presentation as well as um, accompanied with a recycling activity. And then um, a specific multifamily uh, complex within the area we service requested some on-site assistance to really help right size containers and improve their overall diversion. And then some, cast, uh, some tours of our recycling facility. Uh, these are just three of the notable ones coming from within the city itself. Um, our recycling facility is located just in Woodenville, right down the road. Um, so Cascadia College, uh, Bothell Family Preschool, and the Woodmore Elementary School. So thank you so much for your partnership. Thank you so much for the opportunity um, to provide a brief update. If you ever have questions, if you have any questions now, um, feel free to uh, reach out to me. Thank you, Emily. And now we are going to hear a presentation from Kevin Kelly, the general manager, and Elizabeth Zorad, who is our Waste Zero Specialist from Recology. Uh, Mrs. Combe, we had a question for the waste management people up here, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Councilman Regney. I was seeing in your uh, information that mm -hmm. we have 1,600 residents and we have 15 commercial customers, and yet the commercial customers are putting about 810 tons of solid waste, and the residents are 997. Are you doing anything uh, to reach out to the commercial customers and try to reduce some of that? Yes, that's an opportunity, I think, for us to do that, especially with our uh, our Recycle Core internship program that we have um, every summer that can actually conduct door-to-door uh, -door outreach and provide commercial assistance um, to those customers. So that's a really good um, recommendation. And I don't, I don't necessarily know if we've been as consistent with that uh, in the past. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? You guys good? Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 that's fine. Thank you. Um, okay, so we have Kevin Kelly, the general manager from Ecology, as well as Elizabeth Zorad, who's a waste zero specialist. All right, thanks, Sabrina, and uh, good evening, Mayor Rayum, members of the council. It's nice to uh, see some of you again and uh, meet others for the first time. So we're delighted to be here and share with you what we have been up to over the past year. Um, just briefly, we'll, we'll give a little bit of a refresher on, on who we are and how we've been performing in the city of Bothell over the past year, both from a collection standpoint, a customer service standpoint, and a waste diversion standpoint. Uh, Lizzie will then talk a little bit about um, uh, some of the things that have been ha happening out in the community and at our retail store. And then I'll just briefly touch on um, a few issues that we see kind of looming on the horizon. So real quick, um, Recology, your, your solid waste recycling, yard waste provider uh, for much of the city. Uh, we are a 100% employee owned company. So that means uh, every year shares or equity of the company go back to the employees who work for it. And we provide uh, collection services, a, a uh, streetscapes service, which is basically graffiti abatement, uh, pressure washing, those types of things. And uh, we process the recyclable materials coming from the city of Bothell. Okay, so from a co collection standpoint, this is sort of our bread and butter, right? This is why we send trucks out uh, on a daily basis to uh, collect the things that customers put out in their curbside bins or in dumpsters. Um, kind of looking at the, uh, the perspective that Emily shared a, a little bit ago, from a residential standpoint, we have just over 9,000 uh, customers. Uh, we have 95 multifamily customers and 463 commercial customers that we service. Uh, month to month, that accounts for about 124,000 stops in the city of Bothell. So you might be thinking, you know, if 
Uh, how does that math work out? Well, if every customer has three carts, uh, we visit them once per week four times. Uh, you're talking about 12 stops times 10,000 customers. You start getting to that number pretty quickly. And what we see is that uh, our drivers are, are doing a great job of making sure that customers are collected. So our, uh, what, we, what we look at in the, in the industry is a miss per thousand rate. Uh, right now, our miss, or in 2017, our misses per thousand in the city of Bothell was 0.14. Um, another way to look at that is it's a reliability rate of 99.99984. So anyway, so I've thrown a lot of math at you guys tonight, but you know, anyway, we'll uh, we'll get through it. So um, it's kind of how we view the world. Uh, so if a if a customer does have some type of issue, um, they call our customer. We have a, a number specific to the city of Bothell uh, that customers call in on. We received about 10,000 such calls in 2017, so a little less than 1,000 per month. Um, and if a customer called, uh, chances are their call was answered in just about 10 seconds, which was an improvement of about a second and a half from the year prior. Uh, when they call, what are they calling about? A lot of times it's a billing question. Um, they're, they're wondering about what material goes in what bin, uh, their collection day, or you know how they handle hard to recycle items. Uh, and then quickly on uh, diversion, um, in 2017, uh, the customers we served in the city of Bothell uh, diverted just about 14,000 tons of material from the Cedar Hills Regional Landfill. Uh, which helps to extend the life of that uh, uh, county asset. Uh, you know, broken down by customer class, the single family residents did the best. They diverted about 64% of their materials. The commercial customers diverted about 30, and then multifamily 27. It's similar patterns that we see in other communities and across the county. Um, I will note one of uh, part of what we do, uh, we take material uh, utilizing the King County system to both the Shoreline Transfer Station and the Houghton Transfer Station on about um, a 70-30 split uh, weighted towards Shoreline. A lot of that is dependent on uh, where our trucks are servicing in the city. Uh, we do that to reduce wear and tear uh, on city roads, get our guys in and out of the city faster. Uh, but as the county is discussing more and more about you know shutting down Houghton and those types of things, we uh, did want to share with with you all that we do use that station as a resource. Um, so I'll, with that, I'll turn it over to Lizzie, uh, who will talk about our store and then uh, some of the community outreach she's been up to. Thank you, Kevin. In addition to the diversion being achieved by Bothell residents, I also want to highlight the Recology Store which serves as a hard to drop, hard to recycle drop off location. So this is a graph that demonstrates the additional diversion achieved by the city of Bothell for utilizing the Recology store. Over the course of 2017, we had over 10,700 visitors and diverted an impressive amount of material from the landfill, including 64,000 gallons of styrofoam, 5,000 CFL bulbs and tubes, and 4,500 small appliance and electronics. And of course, much more that you can see on the screen. We are happy to introduce something new this year. Early, late February of 2018, we are improving our list of accepted items at the Recology Store to include latex paint. Since the start of the program in late February, we have diverted 5,000 pounds of latex paint across all of our stores, which is pretty fascinating. This year, we are also introducing quarterly sustainability workshops at the Recology Store. These workshops will help Bothell residents reduce their waste by simple lifestyle changes and choices. In fact, this Friday, April 6th, we have our spring quarterly event at the store from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. where residents will be able to learn how to create non-toxic, zero-waste green cleaning supplies for their home. In 2017, Recology Cleanscapes partnered with regional and local organizations. We take pride in being an active community partner. 
In addition to all of the partnerships that we have, we also are highly involved in the Bothell community through various community events that allow us to interact with residents, schools, businesses, and local organizations, some of which include Sustainamania, Ecotober, and a sustainable job fair that was located here at City Hall. Last year for council presentation, you may remember that I uh, did a short presentation about T-Mobile at Canyon Point and their achievements in waste reduction and diversion. So I wanted to provide an update. Since then, T-Mobile has been effective, has been able to achieve uh, right under $14,000 in savings a year simply by prioritizing composting and recycling. And they were nominated as 2018 Business Generator of the Year and will be given their award next month during the Washington State Recycling Association Conference. I'm very proud that we're able to recognize a local business here in Bothell statewide. So what's to come for 2018? In partnership with the City of Bothell, we will be providing innovative outreach programs. And I'm very excited that this year we are going to be introducing a program directly targeting apartments called WasteWise. This program will make recycling and composting easy, convenient, and hassle-free for both residents and property managers. And of course, we will continue our participation in community events throughout the year. And with that, I will turn it over to Kevin for closing remarks. Thanks, Lizzie. So just uh, to touch base, a few things uh, you will see if you're not seeing them already uh, in regard to solid waste recycling is um, uh, the county, King County, is working on updating their draft comprehensive solid waste plan. Uh, they are required by the state to do this every five years, uh, but they are currently working under a version that was last approved in 2001. I think the county feels like they have a lot of momentum uh, going forward with this plan, and they're hoping to get the approval not only of their own council, but also uh, cities who are participants with their inter interlocal agreement as well. Um, the county will also be increasing their uh, local hazardous waste fee uh, beginning in the coming months. So there will be an additional charge uh, on customers' bill that will amount to maybe a dollar or so uh, to help uh, help them with that program going forward. Um, and then the, the big issue that's been getting a lot of attention in the industry relates to uh, the international markets and where recyclables are going. Uh, for a long time, uh, certainly for the past decade plus, uh, more than 50% of uh, recyclables were exported to China. And in July of 2017, the Chinese government filed a uh, notice with the World Trade Organization that they would ban uh, 24 types of materials. Uh, they would severely restrict the import of those materials and uh, increase fines and, and do a number of things. So effectively what that has done as they have uh, ramped up enforcement is taken, taken away that market capacity. And so there has been a scramble um, not only on the, in, in this region, but I would say up and down the West Coast, across the United States and Europe, Australia, to uh, seek uh, secondary markets or markets that weren't traditionally used. And uh, the, the value of recyclable materials has, um, well, in the case of paper, mixed paper, which makes up about 40% of all recyclable materials, has declined by 97.5%. Uh, so it has had a dramatic impact uh, on the industry. And there, um, uh, there are a lot of questions that are going on right now about uh, what, what the future holds and, and uh, what to do uh, and how to, um, how to market these materials. So, you know, from our standpoint, we have found uh, other markets that we've been able to to send this material to so that it can be recycled. Uh, but we uh, we are looking for um, solutions to to help with this both in the uh, in the short term and the long term. So um, I guess more to come on that, but I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions about anything. So. All right, Deputy Mayor. 
I'm so glad you brought this up because I was actually going to ask about it. <laughs> so currently, what's hap So currently, as we stand, what's happening to our recycled paper that you collect? So same as before, it's well with the with the difference being that instead of going to China and us getting paid, uh, it's now um, it's going to Southeast Asian markets or India, and probably beginning in the next couple of weeks, we will have to pay uh, to move that material. So do you see our fees going up because of that? I would assume at some point. I, I, do, I can't answer that right mm. now. Um, but at some point, we're going to have to kind of rethink oh. things because this is not a sustainable path for us to be going down. Um, you may not be able to answer this question, but it's really curious to me. How does the recycle, is it just because China doesn't want the paper anymore that the, the value of, of the paper has dropped by 97%? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, it's... I can answer that in maybe a long way. I'll try and do it as quickly as I can. I don't know that it's they that they don't want the material uh, because they still China isn't uh, as rich in natural resources as we are, um, and so they there's still that need there. Um, I haven't heard this from the the paper side of things, but I've heard it from the cardboard side of things, which also accounts for about forty percent, and the price for that has declined significantly to, let's say, somewhere between seventy and ninety dollars per ton of material. Uh, in China, they're actually charging five hundred dollars per ton. So the if if you can if they can get it and they've been looking to internal sources to do it, um, there's very much a, a robust demand for it. I th so I think in some ways they're trying to, they're trying to clean up the contamination. I think they're trying to weed out some bad actors. And I think that they are trying to develop um, the industry on, on their own a little bit better. I, but that's, you know, sort of speculation on my part. Sorry. And I just yeah, no, <laughs> put no. you on the spot. It probably isn't fair, but it's fascinating. I, I'm, Thank you for your explanations. Yeah, absolutely. And all the work you do. Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to thank both of your organizations. Um, we are a full-service city, so we provide water, sewer, garbage. And I, hard, I hardly ever hear anybody call and complain about their garbage service. So I just really appreciate that. Um, you guys do a fantastic job. Thank you. Our, yeah. our crew, I know our drivers take uh, very seriously this uh, notion that no can gets left behind in the city of Bothell. So, <laughs> that's uh, right. Just you. in Bothell, though. Just in Bothell. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 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 Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sabrina. Uh, let's see here. Council committee report, city manager report. City manager, you good? I had something, if you oh, don't okay. mind, for a moment. Shoot. I just wanted to introduce our new community development director, Michael Catterman. Uh, he joined us on Friday. Uh, we are just absolutely delighted to have him. He has over 30 years of experience in, in planning, um, community development, and I just think he's an exceptional addition to our team. Um, he recently joins us from the city of Bellevue, and we've been hearing some feedback that we snagged a really great um, employee from them to, to join us here in Bothell. And so, Michael, if you wanted to maybe say a word or two. I haven't been trained on microphones yet. <clears throat> so uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I just want to say how, how thrilled I am to be here. This is quite an honor to be the Community Development Director in Bothell. Uh, it's one of the communities I've been tracking for many years. I've been in this region now for 27 years, working in different jurisdictions in the public and the private sector. Uh, and the, uh, just a lot of exciting things, uh, very good planning work going on here in Bothell. And I'm just thrilled to be a part of that and really looking forward to working with the the dedicated staff that I have in community development, I've now met just about everybody in my department. I think one's on vacation, so I haven't met him yet. Uh, but uh, just a great group of folks in my department and throughout the city. And I'm looking forward to working with all of the council members in the community on uh, the, the issues that we're, we're working on here in Bothell. So thanks very much. Thank you. It's great to have you. I did hear from your mayor. He's pretty upset. So that's OK. <laughs> that was a good sign. <laughs> Yeah, former. Um, okay, is there any committee reports? No? Oh, there we go. Councilmember McAuliffe. Thank you. And I have two tonight. First of all, I need to um, thank David Boyd, who is our senior planner in our community development department. He contacted the Liquor Control Board regarding the restaurants that would like to use the flex space.
um, on Main Street. And what their impression was and what their concern was, as they said to me, was that they would have to have a designated server out there at all times. Um, David um, secured for me the WAC, which says that you do not have to have a dedicated server out there. You just have to have someone who's in charge of those tables. This will make it easier for our restaurants to actually use that flex space and not feel that they have to have someone out there at all times. So I really want to thank David Boyd for your work on this. I appreciate that very much. And one other thing I want to share with the community is I um, took a ride on our community van. So King County Metro has a pilot program that has a community van that serves Bothell and Woodenville. For $2.50, you can go to downtown Seattle, you can go to Bellevue, you can go wherever you would like to go within their King County area, and um, they will take you and pick you up. It's a wonderful service. I went to Pike Place Market and enjoyed myself very much. So I hope you'll all use the van because it is a pilot program and it is underutilized right now. So just have, if you need more information, contact any of us and we'll tell you how to actually secure that reservation. It only takes three people to be in the van and then you can go. Thank you. <laughs> is there uh, anybody else that has public community reports? Nope, okay. All right, we're into the visitor comment section. Uh, each person addressing the council will give his or her name in an audible tone of voice for the record, and unless the council grants further time, shall limit the address to three minutes. No person other than the council and the person having the floor will be permitted to enter into any discussion, either directly or through a member of the council, without the permission of the mayor. And I have sign-up sheets, if you guys fill one out, I'll get you in uh, the line here. Uh, first is Judy Carpenter. Good evening, council members. Uh, I am responding to the selection of the names for the new park presented to you by the Parks and Recreation Board for consideration. They are Redfish Park or Redfish Regional Park or Bothell Redfish Park, uh, Lushoot Seed Park, Willows People's Park, or One Bothell Park. Here are some excerpts from emails I received from members of the Village of River Bend community I would like to share with you. <clears throat> Number one, I suggested the name Willow Peoples Park as a way to honor the earliest known residents of the Sammamish River area, including what is now Bothell. Bothell could be added to the beginning of whatever name is chosen if it seems important to clarify. Number two, the name Willow People is what the original white settlers called the native peoples, so it's accurate of a place that's, that makes sense. Three, I am happy to add Bothell Regional to any of the chosen names. Four, I would suggest that we should preserve the Willow People name as part of a plaque or sign that appears in the area, or perhaps even a structure that is on the park, but the park itself should have a regional name that includes the fact that Bothell owns the park and the indigenous people that lived along the river were also called Sammamish. Therefore, an ideal name could be Bothell Sammamish River Park. Five, Bothell is a community that continues to develop in wonderful ways. We have so many wonderful parks that provide such diverse opportunities for residents and non-residents alike. And now we have added the largest open space ever. <clears throat> let, let's let the world know two things. First, that this park is a resource that Bothell essentially created. We fought for it, we paid for it, and we will be maintaining it. Second, Bothell is committed to preserving this park for the use and enjoyment of the entire region. <clears throat> Sixth, whatever else is decided, I would like to see both Bothell and the word regional incorporated in our new park's name. I think, number eight, I think the name Bothell Sammamish River Park really represents the area very well. As you can see from the comments abo above, there are varying opinions of what the park should be named. In my opinion, the most, most of the finalist names do not identify Bothell as the location of this park, nor does it identify the expanse of the park that's along the Sammamish River. 
I would request the council direct staff further expand and enhance the name processing. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Sharon Dimmitt. Oh, good evening, everyone, council and people. Um, I'm here for two reasons. I'm a part of the Bothell Museum, and we are really excited because um, this next Sunday, we will have our opening of the Bothell Museum. And if you haven't been there, it's the three, sto uh, there's the Hannon House, uh, which is the, um, the sort of center stage, but we have the schoolhouse and the uh, the cabin, and all three will be open. And uh, we've cleaned it. We had a big party, and we we washed the windows and everything, so we are ready for everyone to come. But secondly, um, I think we would really be remiss if we did not thank the city of Bothell. I don't know if people realize that uh, the city. Uh, takes care of the outsides of the buildings, the roofs. In fact, there uh, there's a squirrel nest right now in the cabin in the city's uh, <laughs> going to find some people to help uh, get rid of the little critters. Um, but the, the city of Bothell does such a wonderful job. Um, they take care of the, all the surrounding, the uh, um, shrubbery and the walkways and and the, our buildings and uh, you know that absolutely we could not exist without the city of Bothell and then I also would like to thank uh, for culture uh, if you don't know for culture is a King County program that uh, supports nonprofits uh, especially with uh, things with the arts and um, every year we write a grant and every year uh, fortunately we have received a small um, uh, enough grant that we uh, can keep our ourself uh, with the electricity on and so on so anyway uh, everyone come one to four this Sunday and uh, we've got some special things planned so hope to see you thank you Thank you. Uh, next is Julian. This is going to be bad. Uh, Reislander. All right. I just have a couple of quick comments about the efforts to choose a name for our Wayne Golf Course Park. Um, I'm usually totally in favor of honoring and respecting um, the existence and heritage of Native Americans and indigenous people who lived here. I think that's a great idea. Um, and I noticed that some of the names that have been suggested for the park include references to names from the indigenous languages or white, white people's names for the original residents. And that, that's a good idea, but I'm just wondering if anybody has contacted the descendants of those people to find out how sensitive they are to those names. Uh, because times change, we don't know whether the names that we're thinking of are respectful of, of their ideas of their history here. So that's just one idea. Um, other than that, I'd like to suggest that we not overthink this or try to do too much in choosing a name. I think we should keep it simple, uh, respect the local history, respect the geography. Um, my original suggestion that I wrote in on the website was Riverbend Park, uh, but then I found out that there's another census entity within King County called River Bend, which is on the east side of King County, so that one probably wouldn't work too well. Um, Sammamish is good, but there are other entities around here which also use that name. Um, one suggestion that I had just walking up here tonight was um, Wayne Meadows, which respects the original history and also reflects the, the geography of the park. Um, so let's choose something simple, something that's easy to spell and pronounce, uh, that local children can identify with, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Next is Aaron Kosand. Kosand. Hi. I think that um, the new park should be named. I think that the new short park should be named Redfish Park because one, redfish live in the park 
and the name of Americans that used to live here. Fish redfish. Two, redfish are wonderful. Three, redfish live in the area. Four, we could help the redfish. And five, we could keep the water nice and clean so people can see the redfish. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Whitney Negabauer. Hi, thank you uh, for the opportunity to comment on the name of Bothell's newest park. My name is Whitney Negabauer, and I'm a Bothell resident, director of the nonprofit Whale Scout, instructor at Evergreen Karate and Jiu Jitsu on Main Street. When researching a name for the park, I dug into our city's natural history in relationship with the Sammamish River. The city of Bothell stands in a most opportunistic position to name our newest park in honor of the natural abundance that played a significant role in bringing Native Americans to the banks of the Sammamish River, Redfish Park. When most people hear redfish, salmon come to mind. They are arguably the greatest icon of the Pacific Northwest, the Sammamish River being host to sockeye, coho, and chinook salmon, the name gives credit to these amazing fish. However, there's another redfish, a small landlocked cousin of the sockeye salmon, which played a profound role in the lives of Bothell's earliest inhabitants. Today, we also know these fish as kokanee. They're smaller in appearance to sockeye with bright red coloration during spawning, but they're significantly smaller, spending their whole life in fresh water, never traveling to the ocean to feed. Interestingly, these smaller redfish were repeatedly described in texts as a significant food source for the original Bothell inhabitants over the larger Pacific salmon. These there is strong, diverse community support for Redfish Park. The naming process began in January. Four months is adequate time to solicit community input for a name. I fear delays in the naming will result in delays in the master planning process and restoration. The fish can't wait. Bothell families from Evergreen Karate and Jiu-Jitsu, Whale Scout, Woodmore Elementary, Figure Four Online, Woodenville Montessori, and representatives from One Bothell and Friends of North Creek Forest are here supporting the name. They've submitted name suggestion forms, handwritten letters and drawings, and created posters, and are ready to begin restoration of our new park. We've already com co contributed volunteer hours, both at the park and nearby North Creek Forest, and many of us have watched salmon spawning in North Creek together. These actions and the name reflects the community's vision for the park as a natural area dedicated to conservation, education, and recreation. Restoration of the river and stream in the park will benefit all salmon species. These include Chinook salmon and killer whales. Kokanee have also been the focus of regional conservation efforts. Because of its simplicity, other components of the park could share its name. For example, Redfish Canoe and Kayak Club or a cultural learning center. The name also invites a variety of stories that could be told at the park in signage or interpretive venues told in the Native Americans' own voices. The name Redfish Park tells a larger story beyond salmon. It honors the Native American history of the Sammamish River and the natural abundance that brought people to this place. Now it's up to us to decide what will bring people to the park in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Kennedy Garcia. I would like to contribute the name Redfish Park to our new park because, because of the Native Americans and uh, and the fish are are important to the Native uh, Ameri Americans. The Native Americans like like the red like the redfish and um, and I would like to contribute to the to the redfish to keep to keep its name. Thank you. Thank you. It's hard speaking in front of all these people, isn't it? <laughs> Next is uh oh, help me out. Rosie Bosa? Close. <laughs> We're trying. 
Check out my my last name if you want. To <laughs> it's too. Rosie Voice uh, to the city of Bothell Council members, and to the members here. Um, I used to live in Bothell, and uh, I love the community. I used to practice karate and jujitsu at Evergreen Karate in Bothell, and Whitney and Brian used to be my instructor. Um, I moved to Queen Anne, but. I support the wildlife and the work that Brittany, uh, that we need to. And um, like I said, I love the, the Bothell community. I was sad that I have to move to Queen Anne because of commute. Um, I don't have kids, but I'm here for my godchildren. Uh, they're two, four, and six. And uh, my six-year-old godchild, she asked me, she said, Auntie, where are you going? I said, well, I'm coming to Bothell. And uh, she said, oh, for the redfish. And I said, yes. She said, I really redfish, that's a cool name. I'm gonna be looking at redfish you know, soon. And uh, for me, it's also educational. It's very simple. Like she asked, she said, wow, redfish, I like that. And for me, it's educational to me, and I would like to share that with the two and the four-year-old when they ask me why it's called Redfish Park. So that is my statement for today. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Sarah Witt. Hello, my name is Sarah, and I'm here to support the name for Redfish Regional Park. I've been involved with the Friends of North Creek Forest um, and their efforts to save and conserve Bothell's natural habitats and plants and animals and fish species, especially the salmon that benefit us all. A lot of us in Bothell and a lot of us outside of Bothell come to Bothell to enjoy the natural environment here. And we all benefit from the environmental services that the natural spaces around us provide. Those of us who benefit, it's important for us to stand up for the species that define our community and our culture and the communities and cultures that came before us. One of those important species is the Pacific Northwest salmon and their spawning red color is defining of our local treasures. It's iconic. Everybody knows the Pacific Northwest has red salmon, red fish. So it's a local treasure that we really need to cherish and highlight to bring awareness. And the kokanee are also another little red fish that we need to learn about. We need to know these things about our own habitats, about our own waters that are flowing, flowing around us. So we can honor all of the red fish by bringing their name into the community conversation through the name of this park. Redfish is simple. The kids can know it, it's easy to spell, it's easy to say, it's easy to use. Um, it can inspire a whole lot of different conversations between education about the native people, education about salmon, cultural awareness, and just pure joy in seeing these things spawn year after year. These conversations can grow and change over time. So the name Redfish is as versatile as the fish itself. And the Redfish Park name can endure for as long as the park endures to protect and serve all of the redfish within it. We can restore this environment to bring them all back so that we can enjoy them forever and ever. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Ready the Redfish. <laughs> Brian Alvarez. <laughs> Hi. My name is Reddy the Redfish. I was born in Bothell from an egg. I grew up in Lake Washington. You can see from my red coloration, I'm currently on a migration back to my birthplace where I will spawn. Many years ago, the redfish who came before me thrived. We were teeming in the rivers and the streams in Bothell. Many people here remember such a time, but things have changed. Thankfully, there are scientists in this wonderful community that care about me and my future young. Your new park has about a mile of shoreline and a great little stream that if restored would really help me out. 
On my journey to City Hall, I passed some of your salmon habitat restoration projects, and I was inspired by what I saw. It shows that you really care about me, and it is my dying wish for you to bestow the name Redfish Park before I spawn. In my life, I've captured the hearts and minds of Bothell families. I hope I have brought a little bit of joy to the council tonight. One thing that's for certain is there is a great deal of excitement for the park because of me, and I am forever grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, a blank one. Uh, Megan Kosand. Hello, my name is Megan, and I've lived in Bothell my entire life. I think Ready the Re I think Redfish Park would be a good name for the new park because it's both simple and memorable. There's a lot of parks I've been to where I can't remember their names because they are long or their names are not very their words are not very familiar words for our vocabulary. But Redfish Park are is composed of very simple words which makes it memorable and more fun. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Leah Young. Good evening. My name is Leah Young. Um, I'm a resident in Bothell and also a North Shore School District educator. And um, I was thrilled that this was a public conversation because as a school teacher, it was an opportunity to involve my students in how to be a good community member and being aware of what's happening in their community. We were able to, we had already been learning about the Native Americans who lived here before us, and we were able to learn about their history um, around this area, and our students were able to combine their science learning about endangered species and to get really excited about, oh wow, there's redfish here and we can do something about the awareness and the impact that we can make to the environment. So they were working very hard on creating emails with me and working hard on creating persuasive posters. Um, students are showing up here tonight so we can see that this is a very engaging process for them and has caught their attention which I think is significant when you're thinking about the support for Redfish and the name of Redfish Park. Um, I think that it's um, very beautiful not only to teach students how to be a thoughtful community member but also that their voice matters and to bring more awareness to the history of where we live and also to the environment and the need for a restoration to help the native species. So we appreciate your support for Redfish Park. Good job, Bridget. Next, thank you. Uh, next is Senator Palumbo. Putting your accolades out there for you, buddy. <laughs> How do I use this thing? Do you want me to take your picture again like last time? What's that? You can if you like. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing it right. Thank you very much. Uh, Guy Palumbo, state senator from the first, the good and gracious people of the first district, and uh, the heart of which is the city of Bothell, which is widely known as the most attractive and intelligent city in the entire state. Um, just wanted to say thank you. Uh, congratulations to the new council members as well. I haven't gotten a chance to see you since the new council has been seated, so congratulations to all of you and to your reelection as well. Uh, I hope everything is going well. It's a good-looking group you have here. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick update. I know I'm going to try to rattle through this in three minutes. Uh, I have a couple of slides I'm going to show. Um, as you all know and everybody in the room knows, um, the biggest issue that we're facing is growth and how we deal with growth and how do we fund the infrastructure for growth. Uh, when I ran in 2016, I promised the people at Bothell that I would fight every day for infrastructure and that's what we've been doing over the last two years. Uh, luckily, our uh, legislative team, Derek Stanford and Shelly Kloba and I are working wonderfully together uh, across both chambers and we're really getting a lot of infrastructure funding, the first of which that you see up here right now. Uh, in the last two years, we've received 61 million dollars of infrastructure for a capital budget uh, in our district. It's not all Bothell that you see up there, but obviously very relevant to the uh, topic tonight about Redfish Park potentially is the money that we got for the Wayne Golf Course. So we got one million to help you finish the purchase, uh, and then we got another million this year to help uh, enhance the aquatic lands along the river for salmon. So hopefully that we can bring back those redfish. Uh, so I'm really proud of that. Um, let me flip through here real quick. 
There's some other significant projects that we received as well. Some of this is in Montlake, but we've got some other ones for the Parks Department here in Bothell. Um, and the really big thing that everybody is concerned about in the district is obviously transportation. And again, for reference, uh, the once every 10 year gas tax package that we got in 2015 from the state, uh, unfortunately did not put a lot in our district. So we got 10 million worth of projects and just in the last two years, as you can see, we've received 36, $30.6 million of new transportation funding. And that's without having a new gas tax. So that's basically your representatives scraping and clawing and fighting for the scraps that are around from other projects when those projects get done earlier or done quicker or cheaper then we go after that money and that's what we've been doing the last two years so we're getting some really good projects out of there uh, relevant to Bothell um, two of the big ones obviously even though it's not in Bothell is the route 9 project so widening that clear view uh, bottleneck is essential for the um, traffic that comes over here on 524 and eventually bleeds into Bothell so we got 8.8 .8 million dollars this year for that which is really a great step forward uh, and then the big enchilada obviously is the 405 522 interchange so we've received 20 million dollars over the last two years to get work on that uh, design and I'm gonna skip real quick I'm gonna move over here okay fast so everybody sees it before I have to go um, this is currently the best case scenario to do these two projects in our district that affect Bothell highly uh, as you can see on the bottom chart that's where our current funding level is so that's the 20 million dollars of new money that we received in the last two years mm -hmm. and as you can see it's a drop in the bucket um, so we have to find a way to get that $225 million, at least for phase 1A, uh, and that's going to be a big vote next year. It's probably going to be the total reauthorization vote, um, but that's likely the only source at this point for that project. So with that, I'll leave you. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Thank and you. Thanks for this. Next is Lori Gogic. I'll stop beeping at him. Hi, thank you very much for the opportunity to comment on the name of Bothell's newest park. My name is Lori Gogic, and I am a Whale Scout volunteer. I also do water quality monitoring and salmon counting on the Sammamish River near the park. I've spent many years involved in activities to help restore our endangered wild native salmon stocks, which in turn will provide more food for our endangered southern resident killer whales. So I was really excited when you purchased the Wayne Golf Course um, for a park because it's going to help both salmon and orcas. I believe Redfish Park would be a perfect name for our new park. The Sammamish River is home to various species of spawning salmon or redfish. Historically, great numbers of kokanee, a lake lock salmon, used the Sammamish River for spawning. The Native Americans at the time called the Sammamish River spawning kokanee redfish. And there are still kokanee that spawn in the Sammamish River today. Therefore, the name Redfish Park would not only tie the park to it, its historic roots, but would also represent what the creation of this park will do to improve habitat for salmon through planned restoration. And I'm really excited uh, personally to assist in this process of restoration work as soon as possible. So I would encourage you to name the park Redfish Park. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is David Bain. Uh, I'm going to differ from the previous speakers a little bit and urge Redfish Regional Park. And I think uh, the reason I'd like to see regional in the name is that we got a lot of regional support. Uh, Senator Palumbo just talked about this year's state funding, and we had additional state funding in previous years. Uh, we've also had a lot of King County funding through the Conservation Futures Program. And I think regional would acknowledge our partners in this project. Um, I also think uh, Redfish captures the philosophy of how this park came to be. Um, back when Redfish were common here, uh, the people living here had a sustainable lifestyle and, um, you know, kind of worried about what happened to everybody else when they did things. And then around the time the town of Wayne was founded, uh, that 
sustainability goal was abandoned. We had, you know, our forest clear cut, our river rerouted. Um, you know, we had Lake Washington lowered that resulted in extinction of salmon runs. Um, you know, and that practice continued for probably at least a century and a half. And then finally, one Bothell said it's time to let public resources be for public benefit and not something that uh, the latest private developer can say this is what we want to do with it. So, um, you know, through the process that one Bothell initiated, we had uh, over a thousand community members comment on what they'd like to see done with the land. And uh, we've raised many millions of dollars to implement the vision that the community expressed and probably about 99% of them uh, expressed uses that were consistent with redfish recovery. Um, I think it's also important to uh, pay attention to the endangered species that uh, use or potentially use the Bothell area. So uh, Lake Sammamish Kokney, just up the river from us, had a return of about 19 individuals uh, this past run. So uh, just a couple of years ago, they were at 6,000. So you can see that you know our current level of development is not very healthy for our fish runs. Uh, Chinook salmon is another species where uh, the population is crashing and it's considered a threatened species and every individual of that species migrates through Bothell. Um, we also have killer whales that are dependent on the fish that grow up in Bothell. And uh, fourth species I pay attention to are the marbled mirrorlets, which um, may pass through Bothell every once in a while as commuters, but they're not living here now. Uh, they need uh, 60 acres of forest uh, where the trees are generally over 100 years old, and North Creek Forest is getting close to being breeding habitat for them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Jeff Jensen. Uh, good evening. My name is Jeff Jensen. I it, grew up in Bothell. I live in Lake Forest Park right now. I'm a, a biology faculty member at the University of Washington Bothell campus. Uh, I spent a lot of my childhood going up and down the streams of the area, always chasing salmon. I've always been fascinated with fish. And I was always excited when I'd see a coho or a chinook. But what I didn't know at the time was that really the native fish in this area that predominated, as far as salmon goes, were, were kokanee. Uh, they played a really big role regionally in Native American uh, culture and subs uh, sustenance. And early settlers here also remarked on this tremendous abundance of kokanee in our waters. I have here some kokanee salmon that were collected locally in 1888. So all of the early ichthyological reports somehow uh, reported these great numbers of fish coming up. These are adult salmon, by the way. This is how small they were when they came in. Uh, there's been a lot of effort on restoration of kokanee in our area, particularly um, Lake Sammamish, as David Bain just mentioned, but also down in Lake Washington, uh, in Kenmore, Lake Forest Park. So there's a lot of interest in restoring redfish. And one of the things I really like about the idea of redfish as a name is we really need, and it's really helpful to have some kind of icon, some kind of target for restoration efforts, something that drives the kinds of conservation efforts we do. And in my view, uh, naming Wayne's as Redfish Park would be a wonderful way to recognize kokanee as a link to the past we've had here, both in terms of Native American cultures, but also in um, non-Native American cultures. And it's a way to highlight advanced and advanced kokanee restoration. Uh, part of my work at the University of Washington Bothell is to tease out the genetics and the history of kokanee in this area, which has been very complicated. Uh, so I think this would be a natural way to further just the general interest in that topic. And in response to a comment that was made earlier, I did contact somebody at the Snoqualmie tribe. Uh, they would have been the historical uh, folks related to the Willow people here. And I didn't get a, an up or down. She was going to take it to other members of their governance. And I would be happy to share with you that contact information if you're interested. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I have no other sign-up sheets. Does anybody else, um, would anybody else like to give public comment? Anybody? Okay. We're moving on to Sarah. 
sorry, I lost my spot. There we are, the consent agenda. There's uh, been no items pulled. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. It's moved and moved by the deputy mayor. Second. Second by council member Agnew to uh, approve the consent agenda. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, place your vote. Passes unanimously. Uh, next, we're on to, let's gotta scroll down. Boards and Commissions, AB 18-054, Council Appointment to the Lodging Tax Advisory Committee. And we have City Clerk, or did you want me to take it? You can make it. <laughs> so we have uh, a Lodging Tax Advisory Committee, and um, we have one applicant. Uh, it is the Council's purview. If we wanted to interview this person, we could, or we can just appoint them. One of the things about the uh, LTAC appointments, this one I believe, I'm drawing a blank here, but they, they have to have specific backgrounds and this person fits the background needed for this position. So um, did you have anything you wanted to add, City Clerk? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, back on February 6th, we, we did do the interviews for the boards and commissions. Um, there was one uh, person during that appointment process that um, council appointed and because she did not meet the qualifications needed for LTAC, we had to let her know that she could not serve. So this person, Jordan Nelson, does meet the qualifications being a hotelier, and it would um, put the balance back in the committee between hoteliers and those that um, receive lodging tax advisory funds. So um, is council comfortable not interviewing this uh, applicant and just placing him on the board? Or do you guys want to interview? You guys are fine with that? Okay. So, uh, since we're fine with that, is there a motion? Deputy Mayor. I move we appoint Jordan Nelson to fill the unexpired term for position number six Second. on the Lodging Tax Advisory Committee. <laughs> so it's moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Council Member Zorns to appoint uh, Jordan Nelson to the, fill the unexpired term for position six on the Lodging Tax Advisory Committee. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, go ahead and place your vote. Passes unanimously. We're on to, uh, where is it? There it is. AB 18-055, uh, new park name for the former Wayne Golf Course property. We have Tracy Burkowski, the parks director, interim parks director, sorry, to kick it off. Thank you, Mayor. I'm just going to bring up my presentation. Bear with me just a moment. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'm here tonight to present the Parks and Recreation Board's public process and name recommendations for the former Wayne Golf Course pro property. The board used as their basis resolution 1258, which suggests that the board solicit public input and gives five criteria for naming. There was no required name, and so therefore the board focused on the others, which were a neighborhood or a geographical identification, a natural or geological feature, historical or cultural significance, a historical figure or individual who made significant land, monetary, or civic contributions to the parks, or an individual who gave their life in U.S. military service. At the January uh, Parks and Recreation Board meeting, the board requested that all names be submitted either electronically or in person. <coughs> Signs were posted in the new park, such as this one on your screen, as well as all park kiosks. In addition, staff reached out to our partners with the details of how to participate in the naming process. There were articles in the Bothell Kenmore Reporter and extensive outreach via Facebook um, and the city's website. In total, 259 suggestions were received, um, many of which were similar or were duplicates of one another. People could suggest a name either multiple times or suggest multiple names. In other words, it wasn't limited to one name per individual. Before the March 8th meeting, um, staff categorized uh, each submitted name to see whether or not they met the criteria, and our goal was to be as inclusive as possible. I just wanted to highlight here, this was the sign that was placed in all of our parks kiosks and um, done by a very talented individual in the finance department named Laura Moon. 
During the March meeting, several other additional names were suggested from the public. They were Bothell Oasis, Lachute Seed Park, and then the three names on your screen which the individual said came from the Lachute Seed language. All of these names were added to the list of names that were taped to the walls of the meeting room. For the Parks and Rec Board meeting, approximately 25 members of the public attended. There was extensive public comment which overwhelmingly supported the name Redfish Park. During the meeting, the public was also given three dots that they could place on names that they either liked or supported. The board then discussed the names which received at least one dot. So that was Lake Duwamish Park, Perpetuity Park, Willow People's Park, Wayne's World, Eagleview Park, <laughs> Sammamish River Greenway, Kokanee Park, Redfish Park, One Bothell Park, and Lachute Seed Park. They also had extensive discussions of, regarding adding the word regional to the park name to show the area support, um, including the many grants and support from the state and the surrounding communities, as well as adding Bothell to indicate its location. They decided to pass on to you um, their, the top four vote receivers and are recommending them in no particular order for you. Um, there was extensive discussion should they recommend Redfish Park, Redfish Regional Park, or Bothell Redfish Park. So they are all in front of you for your consideration. In addition, they're also push, pushing forward Lachute Seed Park, Willow People's Park, and One Bothell Park. Given that two of the names related to our first people, staff reached out to the local tribes for any thoughts on the recommended names. We received feedback from the Suquamish and the Snoqualmie tribes. Generally speaking, the proposed names will, were well received. However, we did receive some feedback that Willow people is not a preferred term for the tribe. However, there was no alternative offered. If council is interested in a similar name, staff is happy to reach out to the tribes to get suggestions from them. In the week since the Parks and Recreation Board meeting, um, there's been much support for some names, but also many voices asking for an expanded naming process because of the importance of the new park. Therefore, I'm putting forth to you tonight several recommended actions. One of them is to select one of the four names from the Parks and Recreation Board. You can also consider other selections of your own or that were included in the packet and make a selection, or you can provide direction to staff to further expand and enhance the naming process, at which point in time we'll return to you with the new process for your consideration and approval. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Great, thank you. Is there any questions? Councilmember Zorns. Um, as I understand it from the history that I was reading on this, and I'm sure you did much more detailed homework than I did, was that the original people were part of the Duwamish? So I, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Our esteemed assistant city manager reached out to the tribes on my behalf, so if you have any additional information to add. Thank you very much. Um, so in the, the outreach to some of our local tribes, um, the explanation that I had understood from the Sno representative of the Snoqualmie tribe that I spoke with was that um, their traditional area was further upriver and that this area was more the Duwamish people from whom the Muckleshoot tribe okay. would be the modern representative. Okay. Yeah. That helps. Thank you. Any other questions from staff, uh, for staff? Councilman Member McNeil. So, um, is there a time constraint on naming the park? No, there is not. Um, okay. And what about the master planning process? We're looking at beginning the master planning process in 2019. Um, as part of your budget, you'll see the expense for the master planning process. Um, I think it would be fantastic if we could have a name beforehand to help be able to guide that process. Okay. Do we need to have a name no, for that to go through that process? No. So we could, um, we can continue the process and that's not going to hinder us from starting the master plan process. What about um, any restoration projects or applying for grants for restoration projects? Is, no, it would have no impact on that. Uh, we could call it the um, the former Wayne Golf Course property or, you know, use any sort of term. And then once the park had an official name, if any contracts needed to be changed, that would be a simple administrative task with a granting agency. Okay, so that, that, that doesn't hinder us from the state either or the no, county? No, sir. Okay. Okay, thank you. 
All right, any other questions for staff? Or are we ready for deliberation? The fun part. Yeah, okay, who would like to go first? And thank you, director. Who would like to go first? Anybody? <laughs> I'm scared. Councilmember Zorns. Uh, fools rush in where angels fear, right? Uh, so um, I'm a very random person, so excuse me if I, if I start to ricochet around the place. One is I love the community enthusiasm. And if I have my druthers, you will never leave Bothell because we need you to stay here in Bothell. Um, that said, you know, I, I get the feeling that redfish is very popular. I did a Google search on redfish, and salmon does not come up in that. What comes up is a perch that's... Uh, most of the United States equates redfish with perch. And so that gave me pause. And I thought, well, if we were to stick with redfish, I'm just thinking out loud here, so indulge me a little bit. If we were to stick with redfish and still keep it, give it homage to and recognition of our salmon, could we swap it for red salmon park could we do that? That way, we would be including all species of salmon and not just one that is just hanging on by its, its teeth. Um, uh, and people who would be visiting the area would not be going redfish. That's a perch. Anyway, so that thought went through my head. Um, and then the other thing that uh, uh, concerned me is branding of the park. Um, are people going to listen to redfish, two syllables? This is the linguist coming out in me. Uh, two syllables, redfish, red hook, uh, red bull. And I thought, is that going to stand out? We want a name that's going to stand out. So I'm just thinking out loud here. Um, and then I really want to make sure that the tribes are on board with this. Uh, I would love a name that reflects all of the history of, of that piece of land. Um, Squawk Slough, nothing is named Squawk. It's not a derogatory name. It honors, it, it recognizes the people who used to live here, lived on the salmon. Um, I would love to see something that's a little more comprehensive to that piece of land uh, and, and, and stay true to what the Native Americans had. We don't know what we're going to be using um, that piece of land for, we might want to put a longhouse in there. And so um, I would love to see a name that reflects um, a variety of the past and the future for that park. So, um, oh, an aside, and nobody really is interested in this, but I did get, uh, at Easter dinner, I was telling my family about naming the park, and my five children thought it would be genius to name it Parky McParkface. <laughs> and so I went through our through our testimony. I saw we had 10, 10 people suggest that. So I don't know whether to be worried about our city or my future grandchildren. But at any rate, um, if you will indulge us while we chew on this, because we really want, you know, this is our baby. We want, we want the perfect name, right? So um, if, we're, if there's no need to rush into this process, my, my druthers are, let's, you know, maybe it's redfish, but maybe it's something. We need to be convinced that there isn't something that reflects what we want for this park more. And what is that? So I would love to. My feelings are, can we wait on this and chew on it a little more? Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Since you gave me the perfect segue, I had a metaphor for this process. For all those parents out there, do you remember naming your child? How many, how many kids are named what they're named because it was the only name both parents could agree on? <laughs> and we have probably over 10,000 parents in Bothell that feel ownership of this park. Um, when I hear redfish, I, I think it's kind of snappy. Um, I like it. I, I, 
I don't know what to make of that it's perched elsewhere and redfish and whether or not they live here. I don't know what to make of that. I, I, I don't mind that it's aspirational. Um, it's obviously inspired um, school kids. So I agree. I don't want to rule it out, but I, I, I guess I feel this pressure of the parent naming the park <laughs> and, and all that comes with it. Um, in, in my mom's culture, um, it's actually considered bad luck to name your children after someone else. Um, and so, you know, I think about how many people try to name their kids after, you know, the middle names from this grandparent. Oh, we got to fit in the other. And, and it feels a little bit like that in this process. Um, and so I guess I would like to see a little bit more of a process and not exclude what's already been um, presented, but maybe open it up for some more mulling. So that's how I feel. Councilman Ragnew. <clears throat> I agree with my colleagues. I, uh, I was entertained by some of the names. Boffel, never trust a politician again, Park. Uh, <laughs> Mark the Park, Parky Park Face, Wayne's World. I mean, they, they were moderately entertaining, but uh, you know, I, I think my colleagues have hit it on the head. We really want to get this right. Uh, let's not rush into it. Let's let's take our time. Let's let's go out. If we have to have a new process, let's have a new process. But but let's get it right because this isn't for us. It's for our kids. So uh, let's work on this. Councilmember McAuliffe. Thank you. And what I really loved about tonight is hearing our children who really cares so much about naming the park. And, and, and the name to them, we want it to be something that they cherish, or that they really um, believe in. So I, I'd like to hear more from our school children. I'd also like to compliment the people who have already spent their volunteer hours at this park and hope that we can continue to do that. Um, but I want to be respectful of the recommendations that came in. And when I counted, all of the different ones, we came up with um, a, a large number for Redfish Park. That was the largest. The next one was Wayne Park. The following was Veterans Park. So I think this is just going to take a little longer for us to kind of reflect on what we really want to name this beautiful park that belongs to all the people. Councilman Olson. Thank you. Uh, so I was, you know, impressed by everyone that came out for Redfish Park. Uh, I think, you know, it was overwhelmingly supported here tonight by everyone that made the effort to come out. So I think that's great. You know, it, it really sounds that we're leaning towards adding some additional process to this, uh, reaching out further. And I just want to say for the Redfish people, you know, keep this enthusiasm up. Um, I don't know if it'll land on that, but it's great that you're being involved and have this energy. Uh, I know, you know, North Creek Park was where it is because people were involved and same with this name. If we can stay involved, I think we'll just, whether it's Redfish Park or something else, I think it's great that everyone's being involved. Do you want me to go now, or do you want to go? I know you want to go last. Okay. So, um, so a couple of things about working with the city. We're painfully slow. Um, we we do, but it's on purpose. It's not because we're like slow mentally. We're, we're we do things very methodically and slowly, so that we try we try not to make mistakes because we're doing things with your tax dollars, and so we try to do the right thing. Um, one of the things, so we've received a ton of emails and a ton of feedback, and it's been all over the board. And I've been here long enough that when I see something like that happen, you start pumping the brakes because it's just like, whoa, wait a second. There's there's a whole lot of concern and anxiety about us making this decision tonight. Um, the other thing that was interesting, I I uh, have lunch with the North End mayors um, once a month on Tuesdays, and I saw them today, and I said, well, we're gonna, uh, you know, it's on our agenda to name Wayne Golf Course um, its new name, and they were like, well, why didn't we ever hear about this? Like we have, I mean, it's a regional park, and they were interested in actually trying to like fan out information from their websites as well to say like, hey, this is, it's not about just Bothell. Like this is a huge regional, probably on the national scale, this park is going to mean something, and so. Um, 
I was a little taken back by that because it was kind of like, well, you guys can go away. I don't care what your opinion is. It's our park, you know. But um, I, they, uh, yeah, it was it was just encouraging and kind of the ideas they were just thinking of while we, we had lunch together today. So um, that was one of the actions. If we were going to do something, maybe we reach out to our partners and say, hey, you know, we've got. I know we have our communications and stuff, and I'm not saying that our staff did a bad job or anything. I just think the the magnitude of this decision. And the magnitude of what happens to this park is 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 regional, and so um, I I would like to as well uh, spend a little more time, um, and I and I I think it is kind of a good uh, civic experience for the kids that did come and want to talk about Redfish Park because like I said we're annoyingly slow, uh, it's it's methodical and I hope they stay engaged. Um, there's there's one thing about uh, doing this a long time you you just learn that like we're. We're, we take our time, and we're going to do it right. And we're gonna, well, at least we're going to. We think we're going to do it right. So um, uh, bear with us. And I think that's all I really had to say about it. Councilmember McNeil, the closer. I don't know about closer. Um, the first thing I want to say is I want to thank um, everybody for coming out and voice and, and letting us hear their voice. Um, that's the most important piece of what we do up here. Uh, but it's also the most important piece of being part of a community, letting the community speak on what the community wants. Um, I'm super uh, excited, um, the colleagues up here, what they've had to say. I agree with every single thing they've had to say up here. Um, being part of this process from the very beginning, um, short period of two years ago, two and a half years ago now, um, on the onset and listening to people across the region, as the mayor said, this is not just a local issue, this is a regional issue gives us an opportunity to do something very special. And I, and I can say this because I've been around the region and talked to many different elected officials throughout this region, and this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Communities don't have this opportunity. We have the opportunity. Um, and I, I've always steadfast on this. The most important thing for me uh, as an elected council member in the community and listening to my community is to let the community name the park. Let the region name the park. Let the voices be heard. and. I feel um, after you know listening to everybody, Redfish name is, is a fabulous name. But is that the name that we're gonna land on? I, tonight I can't, I can't say for sure that that's the name we're gonna land on, but I appreciate the process. I appreciate the kids getting involved. That's how we got where we are today. It's because people stood up and said, this is what we want, we wanna save it in perpetuity. 30 years ago is when we started this process. King County put some money forward to acquire the Wayne Golf Course. The Wayne Golf Course then got saved by the City of Bothell, all the hard work we've done to get this far. I asked a couple questions earlier about the master planning and the restoration projects because I don't want that to stop. I want to make sure that we can continue moving forward and continue to make this the special place that we started out for it to be. And to me, to take a little bit longer to make sure that we have the right name in perpetuity for future generations to enjoy, to me that's the important piece. But I do want to say thank you to the community, and I want you to continue to reach out to us. As the mayor said, we've received, I can't begin to tell you how many emails, but there's more out there. There's more available. So let's absorb it. Let's see what we can do and what we're going to come up with. But I am super excited about this process and how far we have come, and I am so proud to be an elected official in the city of Bothell right now. Did everybody get a chance to talk one time? Okay, good. Um, so... There's the, uh, so we need to make, we need to have a motion. Is there a motion on the floor? Or is there a, there's not a motion on the floor. Would somebody like to make a motion? Uh, Deputy Mayor? Do you wanna make a motion? You, you I'm just trying to get it done. You don't, you don't need a motion. We don't? Okay. We don't need a motion. We heard, we heard your direction. Yeah, the council direction is clear that you wanna bring this back at a, a different time once there's been uh, a different process in place. So okay. we work with staff to uh, effectuate that. So there was one thing that if, if this was the will of council, I did talk to the city manager ahead of time, and I hope that if you have ideas, if you have ideas of how, what process in addition to, so staff fall, we have a municipal code that says, you know, two cups of flour, one egg, and three scoops of sugar, or whatever, to name a park, and they, they follow that. So as a council, we need to give them a direction on additional process uh, to go forward and then the city manager could pull that together and bring it back to us for approval at a later uh, council meeting. So is there anybody that has some thoughts about additional process they'd like to see 
now, and I guess they can contact you later as well, but just so the public can hear it too, is there any additional? Councilmember Member McAuliffe? Well, I, I did want to know, I, I really would like to hear the voice of our children a little bit more, so maybe somehow asking the school districts to, or the schools to kind of play it, come in with their ideas because this is their legacy and this will be their park for generations to come. So I still do, I would like to have some children's voices from our school districts involved. Good, that was one of the ones I was thinking of. I was gonna bring up. Is there any other ideas from council? One of the thing, and I, I was gonna help you guys with this is reaching out to the other, the other mayors and seeing if they can put it out on their website too and say, you know, just to try to get as much feedback as possible. Um, also having some controls over the uh, pub, uh, the online um, survey submittals. Um, sometimes people could get a little excited and go to all the different computers in their house and send the same one. And so if we could just kind of try to make sure we're getting one person, one one suggestion, that, that would be good. Not that anybody did that. I'm just saying that that happens. And I, I checked in to see if that we had those controls and we didn't. So any other suggestions? Uh, Council Member McNeil, did you have one? I will send the city manager my suggestions. We've had a, a brief conversation about it um, and opening that process up. So very excited where we're gonna be going. Okay, anybody on this side? De Deputy Mayor? Well, I would be interested if if the Duwamish or the whichever tribe um, we reached out to before, if they did have some input, they just weren't quick enough in responding. Um, I would be interested to know what it might be. I think that was the Muckleshoot tribe, did you say? In a, or deputy, what is, what's your title? <laughs> <laughs> the assistant city manager. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we reached out to the Snoqualmie, Muckleshoot, and Suquamish tribes, um, so we could have noted that down as more interest in that process. All right, anything else from council? Is that a good enough direction? Okay. Moving on. A, B, oh. Mr. Mayor, if I may, yeah. the disembodied voice from over here. <laughs> I just wanted to um, say a few words about Don. This is his last city council meeting um, here in Bothell. He is retiring effective on Friday. And I know that council thinks of Don as the, as the one who brings scintillating topics to you, like uh, the wastewater system comprehensive plan update, <laughs> um, the Dufira saga that some of you may remember. Um, but Don's more than just an entertainer and um, <laughs> more than just a pretty face, our Don Fiend. Um, he, uh, the work that he has done and with council support in his eight years at the city, he has done an enormous job in getting our utilities in particular to a place where they are more financially as well as um, structurally stable. So I want to to um, acknowledge Don for that. And um, other work that he's done since he's been here has been to really ensure that the growth here in Bothell, that the development community is paying their fair share of additional capacity. That it's not all falling to either the ratepayers in the case of our utilities or the taxpayers in case of transportation improvements. But um, the Dufira saga was one example of that. Um, Connection fees for our utilities was another example. Um, he, he worked to ensure that funding of Horse Creek could happen without it falling entirely to our ratepayers. So just some of the things that I wanted to remark on Don before he left, because as I said, he's not just our, um, the guy we drag out for the last item on every council agenda. So we will miss him for that in particular because now somebody else is gonna have to do that. But um, thank you, Don, for your work and- Thank you. No further ado. Thank you. Um, uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council Members. It's, uh, this is Don Fien, Utility Services Manager, and this is a resolution uh, item regarding the resolution adopting the 2018 Wastewater System Plan. <coughs> and um, so here's the planning requirements for the plan. It's, it's to be submitted and reviewed by the State Department of Ecology. Um, Content checklist um, includes planning information, basic planning criteria, regulatory requirements, system design criteria, 
collection system evaluation, existing facilities, operations and maintenance program, improvement program, and a financial program. Uh, the Bothell service area, uh, sewer service area, public system has been around since 1960. Um, our crews operate four lift stations over 64 miles of pipe. Um, they also have a supervisory control and data acquisition system. Um, the service area and characteristics is predominantly in the King County portion of Bothell. There's 5,487 total connections, service area population of over 22,000, and there's also a good sizable amount of employees in Bothell with all the business parks, et cetera, 12,000 plus employees and 5,000 students. And here's the flow. Um, the average flow, you can see, is about 1.5 million a day. Um, peak domestic flows are about 2.7. The peak wet weather, which are the, the flows that we use to evaluate the capacity of requirements, um, around 6 million gallons per day. Here's the service area. Once again, seats mainly the King County portion of Bothell. Um, to our uh, east is Woodenville Sewer District. To the west and to the south also is North Shore Utility District. And to the north is the uh, Alderwood Sewer District, which, um, but in the Alderwood Sewer District and North Shore serve a lot of uh, Bothell, City of Bothell residents as well. And here's uh, the collection system. And uh, getting into the operations and maintenance program, um, the routine ma uh, wastewater system includes uh, 64 miles of sewer main, side sewer replacement and repair, sewer gravity main inspections and repair, wet well maintenance, pump station maintenance, fan hole inspection. Other O&M programs include uh, fat, soil, and grease reduction program and emergency procedures. Although there's no um, required state uh, certification for wastewater collection system operators, uh, we in fact have three city employees with class uh, one certification, uh, two with class two, and three with class three certification. And they work for Ted Stonebridge, who's here in the audience tonight. Um, the SCADA system provides uh, remote uh, monitoring, access, and program control of 23 sites. And um, that involves things such as monitoring the pump run times, running the generators, uh, pump start and stop, high and low wet well in the pump stations, pump fail indication, and generator fail indication. There are currently 4.8 full-time employees, which means there's some, you know, there, there's uh, people that are working part-time in other uh, areas as well. Um, the estimated staffing level is 5.0. The proposed project to eliminate a lift station would bring that right in line by reducing uh, demand of uh, 0.18 employees. The projects uh, in the capital improvement plan are identified and prioritized by a combination of reported problems, frequent maintenance concerns, inspections, video reports, and the modeling results um, that the consultant ran. And the consultant was uh, Gray and Osborne, and Eric Delfell is here tonight to represent uh, Gray and Osborne. Uh, those projects include uh, lift station one improvements, lift station four abandonment, and that's the one that would uh, result in less maintenance, operations and maintenance uh, time. Uh, citywide sewer main replacement projects and the emphasis, of course, in the downtown sewer. We're tearing everything up throughout the downtown revitalization area. We want to replace the old sewers um, and not have to tear the roads up again later. This map shows where all the, the projects are located, pretty spread out throughout the the Bothell service area, a little more emphasis maybe in the downtown, but it's going to be less and less as we've uh, spent a lot of time on in that area in the last uh, several years. 
Financial analysis, the city wastewater utility finances appear to be in good shape. The rate study was conducted for long, the long-term program in 2017. Um, the rate recommendations have been implemented, and this plan, proposed plan, does not affect the current rate recommendations, which currently about a 2% increase over the next four or five years. Um, facility charges were also reevaluated and revised in 2017 as well. Uh, summary and recommendation, this plan will be submitted to the applicable state agencies, Ecology and Department of Commerce. It's not anticipated there will be any substantial comments. If further action is required, staff will bring the item back to council. Uh, we invite your council comments, and our recommendation is to adopt the resolution approving the 2018 Wastewater Comprehensive Plan update. Thank you. You're welcome. I want to talk to you about retirement in a second, but let's see if there's <laughs> any questions. Is there any questions of council? Uh, Councilmember McNeil? Yeah, did you mean, did you say there was 5,487 connections? Yes. And is that, what does that equate to as far as single family homes versus commercial? Um, I, I think we can, <coughs> let's see if we have a breakdown of that. You can always just get it back to me too. Sure, sure. You have to do it now, thanks. Eric will look it up. <laughs> Any other questions, Deputy Mayor? <coughs> okay, buckle up, because I read the whole 380-something <laughs> pages. <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, there's a story behind it, but anyway. I looked at the agenda packet, and I said, where's all the information? So I went in today and talked to Jennifer, and she's like, there's a link. And I was like, oh, dang. I had a lot of reading to do. <laughs> so... Um, I have uh, several questions. Um, I'm interested in the permitted use of reclaimed water. So um, sh should I give you the page number or just launch my questions at you and hope that you catch them? Well, I'm pretty familiar with the reclaimed okay. water. So what I'm curious about is it talks a great deal about the permitted uses for the re reclaimed water. but. Um, it sounds like everything that they could be used for, they're not currently being used for. So I was kind of curious, currently, how much that reclaimed water is being used, or is it it's in not, the future? It's not. So we we uh, we did a study on the reclaimed water uh, a couple years after I got here, and um, so did a feasibility study, and it really didn't pan out for the city unless the water was uh, free as far as wholesale costs are, are very close to it. And we would have to get uh, grants for some of the, for the infrastructure as well. The problem is when you, the, when you build a reclaimed water system, you're actually competing against your own water system. Right. And you have fixed costs associated with that, that your domestic water system that don't go away. There, you, there's just fixed costs no matter what, no matter how much usage so you're drawing off. So you have to, take that under consideration. So we, we ran the numbers and it didn't work out. So that's, that's where we are with uh, reclaimed water. We did a pretty involved study. Uh, it was before you were on the council, but I think the only one that's here is uh, Tom, Tom Agnew is from, from that council. So. so it sounds like it's kind of for future it's, consideration. It's a future consideration if we were to get grants. Oh, OK. Yes. So currently, we just are not cleaning it to that level, or we're just Well, the water, that, that, that comes from King County, way from, from it's the effluent from Brightwater, and it's that they, they'll be selling it to us. Oh, I for see. For a very low fee if it ever happens. Yeah, I, I think we were going to pay very minimal amount, and it would work out. But the problem is we would need grants for the infrastructure. Got it. Okay. Part of it is, if I may step yes. in just for a moment, is that you have to build a completely separate distribution system. Right. You can't combine right. the water supplies. Right. Purple so, pipe. Yeah, that hmm. in and of itself is a, is a very large investment. Okay. Um, then my next question is about consumption. So I'm looking at the chart. Um, it's called winter water use. And it was just interesting to me. It gives like an average residential consumption of um, in 2010 of 0.66 MGD. What's MGD stand for? Million gallons. Million gallons. So that's per resident. 
and then in 2015 it's 0.85. And I guess I would have thought with all the the water saving faucets and toilets and shower fixtures that it would go down. And I was just curious, is there an explanation for why consumption's up? It's mainly growth, and things have leveled off. I think we did. We tend to project it a little higher. I think than what happens because it ha you're, you're right. Um, over time, I think the, you know water usage has plummeted quite a bit, but it is kind of starting to level off now because so much has been done. But um, so it's probably conservative as far as the estimate. Okay, I, it was just a curiosity because I, I guess I was under the impression with all the required water saving devices yeah. that we would our consumption individually would have gone down right now when i when i project rate revenues and and looking at the at what um the growth and all that i actually so there are growth rates quite big in bothell right now because the the economy but i knock that percentage in half because of the, con the conservation uh impact but it there is some okay um, and then, let's see, on the sewer model results. So when I look at this chart, it talks about um, pipe capacity and then the percentage full in build out. Mm -hmm. And so I clearly don't understand this chart because I don't understand why it would say negligible surcharge, no improvement recommended if it's a 114% full and build out. So I just wondered if you could explain that to me so I better understand it. It's a, it's a, it's a model and it's a, it's a bit conservative as well. Um, the, uh, if it, what, what you're usually looking at is a, is a peak rate, peak rate of flow that's, uh, it can be somewhere between three to four times the average and what you're getting is inflow and infiltration it, and you get the biggest flows during a storm, a storm event, just like you do for a storm system, because the older systems have a lot of, um, in particular, have a lot of inflow and infiltration getting in through the joints and the manholes and that kind of thing. Um, but it is, it is a conservative number, so we, we do a reality check as well. What's really, what do we really see? Why do we see? We had a giant event in December 2007 that was uh, considered a 100-year event. And so a lot of it we really rely on is did what happened then and what did we see, so. Yeah, I was just curious because the one that says it's 133% full in build out says negligible surcharge. And so I was just not sure I was reading it. Uh, Eric Sigalow. Correctly. If I, if I could add to that, it is a conservative model, but there are also 15% surcharge is not that significant and there are ways to reduce the flows that don't involve capital projects. That's. So you can reduce it on the, you know, the production end. So people produce, you know, lower low flow toilets, those types of things, and also reducing your I and I <clears throat> through your I and I reduction program. Would it, you would expect to see lower flows, and hopefully, we would not have to invest capital capital. Um, yeah, it was good news. Yeah. I mean, I looked at it and I thought, oh, great, there's work we don't have to <clears throat> the do. The other piece of that is that build out is a 20, 30, 40 year projected number. It's not, you know, it's not immediate. Okay, so then the ones where it says replace, those are replaced with 18-inch pipe. Those are ones that we know right now have to be yes. um, replaced. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, oh, there was, I thought it was interesting under private facilities it says, and there's an extensive amount of wastewater infrastructure within the city that is situated on private property parcels and is the responsibility of the respective owners to maintain. The city estimates there are, is approximately 25,000 linear feet of private sewer main located within the city limits. And it sounds like they're um, in homeowners associations as well as commercial properties. So I'm in a homeowners association. How would I know if my homeowners association is responsible for their sewer pipes? Well. Generally, it would fall. It, it, are the roads? If the roads are private, there's a good chance that they would be. Okay. But those, but but it, in some cases, like you could have an there could be a we could have an easement on it. But if it's a public road, it's almost certain that's going to be also a public sewer. Okay. That, I mean that's that's a general way. Or you can come to the city uh, city hall and we can look it up to verify. Okay. I just wondered. Um, and then under let's see the. So under the capital improvement project summary, I just wanted to um, 
to note when people ask why they have to pay utility bills and why they're so high, this would be why, because we have to replace things. Yeah, it's like, um, so, you know, for instance, so if you have 60 miles of pipe and you expect the pipe to live 50 years, you're going to have to replace a mile a year. It's a, and so, you know, it is a... And how much does it cost approximately for that one mile? Do we have a good mile price here? It unfortunately varies if it's in a road, if it's really deep versus shallow. Just take your best guess. I won't know the difference if you... <laughs> uh, if, including <laughs> asphalt, you're probably 250 to $300 a foot. Yeah. Okay, and how many feet are in a mile? 5,280. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Okay, that's all I was really trying to get at. <laughs> Um, okay, and then um, I think it's the last one. I, I, I think it's the last page there where it talks about the um, total operating revenues and total expenses and then the end balance. Mm -hmm. And it looks like starting in 2018, we're just ever so slightly have more expense than revenue. And then the end balance is 3000 Do you need... A sec. I don't want to. Well, the the end uh, the end balances are quite high in every year. Let me see, uh, you, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Well, the so I'm just oh, the I'm operating. just wondering that that end balance. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, let's, let's take a step back. So. Um, Back in the document, there's talk about reserves. And what I was trying to figure out is within this chart, where are the reserves um, The reserves are, are not shown. I don't think they are shown on this one. I mean, I, ha I do ha I have a ri I have a regular rate spreadsheet. I update regularly. You have a beginning balance. It's kind of the original. Beginning, but we don't have the unrestricted balance in the reserves on here, on this one. I do have, I do have that. I keep that regularly updated on a, a spreadsheet uh, that work with the with finance back and forth and uh, so we have and we have the operating reserves in there and um, so we've taken a close look and we so and you know basically the basic rule of thumb there is you look at the as far as rate revenues you want to have the rate revenues minus the um, total operating expenses and a certain amount for depreciation, which is amount that would go into capital, and you want that to be close to zero, really, is what you want on a year by year as far as those two numbers. And um, then uh, the facility charges cannot obviously help that, and if you have great facility charges, you can go above that and on your spending on the capital. So that's generally the way you look at it. So um, I guess what I was curious about is when you look at operating revenues versus expenses, they're fairly tight in 2018, but then when you get to 2024, right, right. it's, um, you know, a million and a half difference, and I, I just yeah, didn't know what that means. Does that mean? Uh, well, that, on that particular year, yeah, the, you're right. There's a, in that particular year, there may be a, diff, uh, a little more expense, than, but then the other years, there's a lot more the other, you know, so it, it varies. Um, and, so we're just uh, trying for the average for them to yeah. even out. I would, I don't, if I can jump in, I would not take a ton of stock in. This is basically meant for the state to show that we have a positive cash flow and mm -hmm. that you are operating um, responsibly. <coughs> um, it is not meant to be a rate study or mm -hmm. any sort of significant financial analysis. Your rate study was <clears throat> was what that was for. This right. is just to show that with the capital improvements we've added, it ends up working out. We, um, you know, we made some assumptions about rate increases and, and things like that in there that you would you would look <clears throat> you would do separately. Okay. Well, and I assume that it's probably more of a budget conversation. I was just yeah. kind of curious about about the chart and how it worked. Sorry, I didn't. This mean is to know. It, this has been actually updated as far as, and it's. I have a more we have a more detailed sheet on this if you want to get into the finance issues, but. This is just more of a summary. I don't know if want is really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to do my due diligence. Yeah. I don't know how much I want to do that. It's a really, nice, really neat <laughs> spreadsheet. It's very interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. That That's helpful. And that was a really exhaustive um, report. Don, I'm going to miss your your charts. <laughs> I Nothing makes me more excited than 
charts and bar <laughs> graphs. Seriously, I'm, I kid you not. And so I will miss your um, your information and your patience and always being the last person on the agenda. <laughs> so you. happy retirement and thanks again. Thanks. Any other questions? Council Member Zorns? This is an easy question. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, good send off <laughs> for retirement. In the update, you're doing six year and kind of a 20 year project projection. Yeah. So, you know, how about how much time do you think it's going to take you to put it together? Not that I'm looking for a deadline, but how much time commitment is that going to get? Are you, does, are you guys going to have to give that to put a update together? Put an update of this You're is creating. The, this is the update. This is the update. So what happens next is so this rolls into our capital improvement program, our capital okay. facilities plan, which we're now working on in the city. We update that every two years. And so it'll roll into that and that rolls into the budget as well. The two years, the first two years of the capital facilities plan, which we're updating this year for not just for utilities, but for also for the roads, parks, et cetera, is uh, updated every two years. And it's, it lays out s s about six to seven years worth of improvements. And the first two of that generally rolls right into our budget. So that's the way the process works. The comp plan kind of, you know, above that, and then you use that information to, um, so there's, a, there's also a comp plan for the transportation system. There's one for the storm system right. and the water system and parks as well. So when will we be, so this is a done deal. When do we revisit this again? And when the cap, the capital facilities plan update this year later on. So this, this year. will all be part of that. Yes. Okay, that's my question. Thank you. Can we get down here, Councilman Agnew? Well, I don't have any questions for you. I just have a comment. I want to thank you very much for everything you've done for the city. Uh, you've always been the last guy. You've never complained. Uh, you've always done a stellar job. Uh, I think the citizens should be happy and proud of what you've done. You should be proud of what you've done. I hope you enjoy your retirement, and I'll see you in Vegas. <laughs> we saw each other in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> what were you guys doing? No, just kidding. No. I'll tell them the story later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there any other questions? Don, I just want to thank you. Um, the utilities is a really important, very fascinating, at least I think it's important, fascinating, <laughs> uh, part of the services we provide. I mean, if the water doesn't come to your house and the water doesn't go away from your house, it's a serious problem. So, um, and I've always felt really confident in having you at the helm of the utilities, and I really appreciate the years of service and dedication and staying here late with us and your fall PowerPoint presentations, <laughs> the, back, the backdrop, really like thanks, those too. Thanks, thanks. So, I uh, wish you the best in retirement. Do you have any plans you want to share with the world, or you're, you're good? I'm just going to travel and exercise and have fun. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, good luck and best yeah. of luck to you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we need a motion. I recommend we adopt the resolution approving the 2018 Wastewater System Comprehensive Plan Update. Second. It's moved and seconded to... Oh, just flew past. Adopt the resolution approving the 2018 Wastewater System Comprehensive Plan Update. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, go ahead and place your vote. Somebody didn't vote? Uh, passes unanimously. Let's see here. Next on the agenda is an executive session for 20 minutes. Is that about? Uh, yeah. For 20 minutes uh, with for potential uh, property acquisition pursuant to RCW 4230-110-1B. This is Ted. It's, um, I, I can only ask you one question. Okay. There, there's very, very little discussion that occur because of the Open Meeting um, Act. Okay. So we'll be in executive session for 10 minutes, and then we're going to adjourn. Yes. Okay. So we're not coming back after the executive session, and uh, have a good night.